Russian warships entered the Red Sea on the 28th of March after conducting exercises in the Gulf of Aden the day before, adding to the presence of other world powers near the Suez Canal. The strategic importance of this area lies in the competition for maritime control from the Red to the Barents Seas and the battle for trade transportation. The ongoing conflict with Yemeni Houthi rebels in the Red Sea has remained a prominent international concern. In response to the rebels' disruption of global trade routes near the Suez Canal, the United States, along with Great Britain, Canada and France, initiated military operations on the 19th of December. The European Union joined the operation on the 12th of February. The Houthis' actions, ostensibly targeting cargo related to Israel, aligned with the strategic interests of Iran, Russia and China, who have established alliances with Iran. Observers initially speculated that any Houthi attacks on Russian and Chinese ships were likely accidental. However, Bloomberg recently accused Beijing and Moscow of striking a deal with the Houthis to ensure safe passage for their ships in the Red Sea. Nonetheless, the Houthis themselves have stated that there is no threat to Russian and Chinese vessels. There are intriguing coincidences in the timing of these attacks. The Houthis began targeting Western ships in November, following new US sanctions against tankers transporting Russian oil in October. The situation escalated in January, after the US imposed sanctions in December on Sunship Management, which manages Sovcom flot oil tankers, and in January on the Emirati company Hennessier Holdings. These sanctions resulted in half of the tankers ceasing to transport Russian oil within a month, coinciding with heightened Houthi activity in the Suez region. As a consequence, Western companies have been diverting their cargo around Africa, while Chinese and Russian firms continue to use the Red Sea and Suez, maintaining their faster and cheaper routes. The Houthis' actions have integrated their operations into the global power balance, potentially providing them with external resources and support for prolonged conflict. Recognizing the limitations of relying solely on military force, the US engaged in secret negotiations with Iran in January in Oman, discussing not only the Iranian nuclear program, but also the actions of the Yemeni rebels, as reported by the Financial Times. The primary maritime threat perceived by the West is not Russia, but China, which is steadily increasing its naval and commercial fleet capabilities. China's strategic approach involves persistent growth in its navy and commercial shipbuilding industry, leading to a shift in the balance of power at sea. US President Joe Biden recently called for sanctions on the Chinese shipbuilding sector, citing complaints from American trade unions regarding Chinese laws favoring their competitors. However, the American shipbuilding industry has declined significantly over the past five decades, making it less competitive compared to Chinese counterparts. According to Clarkson Research, China has surpassed other manufacturing nations in terms of its share of the global ship order book by dead weight. In 2022, China held 47% of the market share, followed by South Korea with 29% and Japan with 15%. The United States and Russia have minimal shares, with 0.13% and 0.45% respectively. China's naval prowess has also grown substantially, surpassing Greece in terms of the gross tonnage of its civilian fleet. With the world's largest navy in terms of ship numbers, China is projected to further expand its fleet in the coming years, potentially reaching 475 warships within a decade. Although the US maintains naval superiority through alliances with its allies, China has started forming strategic partnerships, such as with Iran, in recent years. Joint naval exercises involving China, Iran and Russia have become more frequent, signaling a shift in maritime cooperation dynamics in regions like the Persian Gulf. This evolving landscape suggests a changing geopolitical scenario where China is increasingly asserting its influence in maritime domains traditionally dominated by Western powers. For the first time in many decades, the United States and leading Western nations are confronting challenges to their maritime dominance. While the West focuses on countering the Russian fleet in European waters, China has been steadily building its naval capabilities, forging strategic alliances and expanding its commercial fleet. Unlike the West, which is engaged in regional confrontations, Beijing is tactfully enhancing its naval strength and alliances, hoping that its strategy of a peaceful rise will obviate the need for direct confrontation. Concurrently, China and its partners are constructing alternative land-based communication routes across Eurasia beyond the control of Western powers. This dual strategy 
aims to bolster China's geopolitical position while providing alternative pathways for trade and connectivity.